guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. Welcome to No Country for Old Men, you Studebaker motherfucker. I don't ever miss a chance to Let hear about the old timers. Let me something. This movie's about Bob Dole. Patreon review. This one is for Grant Steele. Grant, you're an awesome person. You've always been super to awesome to us, man. And we super fucking appreciate it. Grant Steele sounds like the greatest superhero name ever. It, it really fucking does. It's a badass Grant name. Grant Steele. Steele. We'll take steel. over the world Balls. and save it at the Balls. same time. Balls of steel. Yes. Duke Nukem. <laughs> if you guys want to get it on the Patreon, the link is down below. So no country for old men. It's not a horror movie, but it's fucking cool. <laughs> it's one of the greatest films of all time. Again, it showcases how badass Josh Brolin is, Tommy Lee Jones, and Javier Bourdain, who is, to, in my opinion, one of the best villains I've ever seen on, on film in this movie. This movie is like definitely a cowboy film, but it's got like thriller elements in it. And you want I, to be a cowboy? Huh? I'll show you. I don't want to be a cowboy if it's those rhinestone <laughs> cowboy. But uh, it's got those elements in it, and it just it's a really unique film. It's really quiet and kind of uh, subtle in the way that it handles the horror aspects of it, which I think that in some way that there are horror aspects in it. Like Javier Bourdain is for sure one of those aspects. Like he's just a fucking crazy. You know what? He'd be a great um, in the DC, either like a, a weird kind of off spin of, of Harvey Dent because he uses the quarter to flip the fate, yeah. or Black Mask. Like he's got all those elements in there. But anyway, man. Slasher the Western. The base, the, maybe that's it. Could be a slasher western. Josh Brolin is is a country boy, country guy out in Texas, uh, living with Carla Jane. I fuck you, <laughs> and uh, keep talking like that. I'll take you in the back and screw you. Keep it up uh, at the getting place, <laughs> and you know he is out hunting or whatever, and he stumbles upon this money that this uh, drug trade gone wrong in the middle of the desert. He takes the money, starts hiding it, and then Javier Bourdain, who is the hitman, is on the case and tracking him down. In the middle of it is Tommy Lee Jones trying to figure out what the fuck is going on and save Llewellyn slash Josh Brolin's life. Llewellyn's the character that he plays. Uh, Oh, that's the the simplest plot. That that that's all it is. But dude, the acting is so fucking phenomenal. Like again, I could watch this movie. I've probably seen this movie a hundred times. But I could yeah. watch this movie at least twice, three times, four times, eighteen times a year with your mother. Never. Gets and it's old. so good. Your mother. It's so good. Yeah, it, it really is. Watch you. Quit your hollering. <laughs> you don't need to know everything. The scene where he finds the drug deal gone wrong and he finds the money. It's probably my favorite of the whole film. It's also quiet and it just takes its fucking time and it doesn't give a shit. Uh, and you don't give a shit. It's not one of those slow burning fucking boring movies. It's it's slow burning and every shot matters and every shot's fun to watch and it's just filmed so crispy. It is, it's, I bit my tongue when I did that. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! When he finds the bag of money from the drug deal gone wrong, uh, it's exactly like when you were a kid. You guys ever when you were a kid and you're going through a pack of cards and you're really hoping for something great and you come across like a jersey card or an autograph and you're so excited about it you don't even react to it at all. You just go, mm-hmm. And then you just go to the next one like it doesn't even matter because you can't contain your excitement. Or like when you open that Christmas present and it's the thing you always wanted. Like, mm, but you, awesome. you want to maintain your cool. Yeah. But it, or, or it's like it's kind of like a or it could be like a reserved fate kind of thing. You know it's a bad idea. You know that this is not going to go well at all. Like he just stumbled across a drug deal and found a bag of money and you know somebody's been looking for it, but he take but it's kind of like if you're in a bathroom at a stall and you look, you know you're taking a major dump and you look over and there's no toilet paper you're like mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that's what it is. That's, true that's what it is. And you're going to pull up your pants without wiping because you got no other choice. <laughs> but that, that's what he does. He finds money and, and he opens the bag and it's just tons of fucking cash. He goes, Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it closes it back up or whatever. But, uh, and it also ties into the whole theme of the movie, which a lot of people go, the movie ends abruptly and we'll get to all that. Uh, a lot of people are like, what is the fucking movie about, man? Like, what's the point of the movie? And I think it's really simple. Uh, it's just every, every single part of this movie is all about fate. And I think that's why, even though he's a guy who lives in a trailer, he's never had much, he comes across this money, it's almost as though, in the way he maneuvers the situation, like a fucking pro. He walks up and he knows exactly what's going on. He knows where to look for the guy, the last man standing. Um, and the way he takes it all in, it's like, in a weird way, he knew he was going to be there. And he knew he was going to find that money. And he knew exactly how to handle it and what was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's, like, it's like one of those things, it's like when you, when you find yourself in a crazy-ass situation and you just kind of roll with the punches, it almost feels like it's fate. Like you were supposed to be there. You're going to know what to do when the time comes. Well, and, that's, and, and the quarter thing with I, Javier Bardem. I, I, think, Bardem I, I think that's what exactly, oh. well, you know, the fact that they play so much a role in the film, or at least the coin flip and the way that Anton uh, Chigurh, yeah, or sugar is in the movie. Sugar uh, water. The Coen brothers, I think, were going with that. You can't escape fate. No matter what it is, no matter what happens in your life, 
it really is just a flip of the coin. Like bad, good, it's all in the middle. Like it doesn't, I, I don't know, it's like just this is the way it's gonna be. And you know, like there's one scene in the gas station when Anton, it's yeah. a great fucking scene. It's one of my favorite scenes in the movie when Anton walks into the end of the gas station and he tells the, you know, uh, the stupid clerk, which you never do that. If, if a guy has a He-Man haircut and looks like a badass, like <laughs> don't fuck with him. And he walks in, he's like, you all getting any rain up from where you're coming from? He's like, what business is you where I'm from? And he was like, I was just past the time. And then, you know, like the whole fucking scenario plays out and he's like, you know, eventually it leads to a point where Anton's flipping a coin and saying, call it. And he's like, well, I gotta know what the stakes are. What am I putting up? So like, you've been putting it up your whole life. You don't even know. It does go back to the fate thing. Like it, it, he exactly really, mentioned it. He's like, this this coin's been traveling 55 years. 22. 22 and now it's here. 22 years. Shut the fuck up. 22 years. Go I guess this movie takes place in 88. Whatever you say, Black Mantis. Yes. Black Mantis, <laughs> White Thunder. <laughs> but yeah, that, and that whole scene, I love the point we were talking about this outside too. I love the point where he's talking to him. <laughs> he's so disgusted with this man because he's like, uh, it's kind of like Brad Pitt in Fight Club when he, when he, when he's got the gun to the uh, gas station clerk's head and he's looking at his ID. He was like, why are you working a fucking gas station? Why don't you do something with your life? And he's like, well, when he wakes up in the morning, his cereal is never going to taste better because uh, I just changed his whole fucking life. Plus, yeah. soggy fruity pebbles. He appreciates life, and I think that's part of uh, 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 Bardem's crazy. He's fucking wacko weirdo. Uh, so, -ha -ha -ha. so good. Uh, Storyline is that he's disgusted with this man and that he's doing nothing with his life. So he's kind of like, he's like, why, why are you here? <laughs> why, why are you fucking here? And the guy's like, well, me and my wife moved from Temple and uh, got a piece of land. He's, he's eating those peanuts. He's like, you better didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you better do it. And he's like, well, call it what you want. He's like, you better didn't do it. Well, you know, <laughs> Javier Bourdain, so again, like the way that he's person personified in this film is he is, I think, in his own mind, because he's crazy as fuck, but he feels like he's an instrument for the universe or whatever to balance out certain aspects of life. And, he, you know, there, there's, by the way, I forgot to mention, Woody Harrelson's in this movie, too. Oh, yeah. But anytime you add Woody Harrelson, it's like adding goddamn salt and pepper to the greatest steak you've ever had. Gandhi. Woody Harrelson. Uh, but, yeah, Woody Harrelson. But there's a... Uh, um, he, you know, Woody Harrelson has does explain later on in the film that he's his own guy. Like, there's something he's crazy as fuck, but he has his own set of principles and rules about life. And I think that Javier Bardem, so uh, we Anton, should all aspire to be. Yeah, I think that he <laughs> what? Uh, he not only has a badass weapon of choice, the weapon of choice is a fucking air gun, which is amazing, by the way. Like, that's like, I'm gonna definitely do that if I ever go on a, a cross country killing spree. <laughs> Dude, uh, if I was taller, that would be my Halloween costume. This it fucking look year. great. Uh, yeah, but. He, I think he views himself as some kind of balancing act or balancing force. Like he's fucking Thanos, but crazier. <laughs> like that whole gas station scene, even the, you know, like the whole thing when he's like, <laughs> he's like, what time do you close? And he's like, <laughs> uh, I'm closing now. Like now, he's like, now's not the time. I said, what time do you close? <laughs> It's like the worst fucking like twelfth grade experience of your life when you oh, yeah. when you can't hand in the homework and you're trying to come up with a reason like I, I couldn't like my mother went in the hospital last like why did your mother go to the hospital? It's like she didn't feel good. I was like that's not an answer. Like you're just like it's like explaining something to your teacher like I don't fucking know I didn't do it and then <laughs> but uh, yeah but he he said uh, yeah he's like what time do you go to bed? He's like, 9.30, typically around 9.30. He's like, I could come back then. He's like, why would you be doing that? Let me close. <laughs> I love the gas station today because he's trying He's trying his it's best. It's scary. I mean, it's yeah. fucking scary. Anybody in that situation would be like the same way. He's like, trying so hard to keep it friendly. Like, he knows this is fucked up and that he might be about to get his fucking throat slit and have a dick put in his butt, but he is totally trying to keep it normal as much as he can. Yeah. Like, the way that he is, the way that he moves, the very methodical, calculating way that he handles and, and analyzes situations. Even when he he's, he's like, you know, getting the buck shot from his leg and barely looking at pain. Like, I mean, I was like, God damn, the Terminator ain't real, but she is. <laughs> uh, I, I was having a great time, but let's go back real quick and talk about Josh Brolin. Because Josh Brolin, again, a great actor, uh, I, he gets pretty much, he gets a credit now, but back in the day, back when this came out, I don't think a lot of people were like winking an eye at Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin, to me, is able to play a range of characters and do it in a convincing way. Mm -hmm. Like, he, you're talking about like playing um, a trailer park cowboy kind of guy, and there's nothing wrong with that, I'm just saying, but playing that kind of like deep southern drawl, like take you in the back and fuck you, Carla Jean, kind of guy, and you believe him. 
he actually seems like my dad. <laughs> uh, but he, he's got like a lot of like aspects to him and the way that he plays it. Kind of like he's a badass, but he's reserved and he doesn't want to get anybody hurt, but he knows he's in a situation he has to fight for his life and he's trying to, it's just, he does it phenomenally. And over all of that, like kind of encircling it is Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. And Tommy Lee Jones, he, his character's great. And Tom. He, <laughs> and Tom. His, his character's great in this movie um, and he does an amazing job. It's one of his best performances of his career, which is a crazy thing to say about Tommy Lee Jones. But uh, he kind of represents the weird heady sort of like Yoda. Yeah, like the like that, that, that thing that kind of hovers over this film, which is to me why it's so close to perfect but not perfect when it comes to the ending of the film, which we'll get to, is that he kind of represents that idealistic like thought point of view and it opens up with his dialogue and it ends with it. It's like, if you're going to sign up for this, uh, he's like, I'm not scared of the bad guys or whatever. I'm not scared of all that. It's just this crazy world. It was like when you take part in it, you're almost saying, okay, I'll be part of this world. <laughs> it's fucking, it's great writing or whatever. Like, you gotta say you sell your soul. He's like, you're like, okay. <laughs> so, but, but, but that smooth, like, just kind of finale, or a finality in his voice yeah, he's, is perfect. He yeah. kind of circles around the movie, like around uh, Bardem chasing Brolin's character, who Brolin, I feel like, is the character of all of us. I think we all identify with Brolin. And I, I like the fact- I got a place to trail the park. And it's crazy too, because he, he could have gotten away with the whole fucking thing. Mm. But he's laying awake that night, and he wakes up and he's like, God damn it. He goes, okay. <laughs> he gets up and he goes, he's going to get that guy some fucking agua. Finally, agua. <laughs> I ain't got no agua. I already told you. I ain't got no agua. What the fuck is this in the back of your truck? <laughs> uh, but, you know, he he's the guy that I think we all identify with. He gets a chance. He takes it. He almost knows what's going to happen to him, but he, he takes the chance anyway. And he's handling the situation as it goes. Tommy Lee Jones' character is kind of on the outskirts with his idyllic point of view of this crazy situation. And Bardem was one of the greatest bad guys ever. So you put all that in a fucking melting pot. Add Woody Harrelson as the alternate kind of hitman to it, who almost doesn't even fit in the film, but he's so good and the character's so good. His little tiny storyline in there uh, should it uh, wow. was one of the coolest fucking um, um, co-star moments. Or what's yeah. the word I'm looking for? He's like a fucking pinch hitter. He comes in for this little part yes, of the story yes, and just yeah. adds this huge layer of it to it. I, I think he adds, I think he explains himself pretty well when the part with him and Anton are having a conversation after he gets kind of busted by Anton doing it. Because they're both hitmen. They both do the same thing. Even though Anton is like the badass of badasses. Because there's one scene specifically when the guy was like, um, you know, when he hires Woody Harrelson's character to go after, uh, you know, um, Lu uh, Llewellyn and Anton. He was like, well, how much of, you know, how bad is Anton? He's like, next to what? The bubonic plague. So, <laughs> like, Woody Harrelson already knows, but Woody Harrelson explains in that conversation with Anton, like, I'm a day trader. Like, he's more of the up, you know, up top kind of uh, hitman guy, like, you know, smooth James Bondish sort of guy. And Anton is just the fucking psychopathic killer that lives in the sewers and doesn't care. On You know, it doesn't matter to Anton what has to happen to get the job done. And even when he gets it done, he might kill the motherfucker that sent him out because, like, you ruined my boots. <laughs> uh, but whatever it may be. And, and, and so that's a. But I always liked. Tommy Lee Jones, man, I, I don't know, man, he's so fucking good too, like in the movie. Like, he's like. He's like that old dude that you would meet at the oversized checkers table at Cracker Barrel and just tell you about life. <laughs> yeah. Like, he would just tell you about life. And you'd be like, okay, well, king me. He's like, well, I'll tell you what, I'll king you. Uh, I probably won't. Uh, what, what, what about the news? You ever seen the news? You ever watch the news? And like, no, I don't really watch. He's like, well, last week, these people. <laughs> they, you're like, fuck the checkers game. Yeah, you, you, just, you, you start listening like, they buried people in the backyard and put wieners in their butts. <laughs> <laughs> And I think his character is the one character, and this may be just be my view of it, but I think his character is the one character that almost breaks through fate. Like, he's the one that's always yeah. pushing. He's always right on Bardo, Bardem's tail, and maybe his fate was to survive, you know, because he's always in the same room with him. He's always this close to fucking dying. And, uh, but down to him, down to every little last character, even the, the lady in the booth uh, at the trailer park with her fucking dude up here, <laughs> and, and Javier Bardem walks up, and she's like, too. I'm done told do. I can't be that kind you harm the human. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Uh, like, it's like, you're like, I hold the whole the cheese. Uh, there, there she was, does this is a weird uh, thing in her fucking place. She's got, so she's got uh, Wendy's chicken nuggets in oh, her yeah. fucking bowl. She's like, oh, you hold the human. Oh, he says, he says, uh, she's like, I told you, I can't tell you where he works. Like, what does he work? And he's like, I done told you, I can't tell you what where we can't give out that information. How to get burned? How to get burned? He's like, how, he's like, yeah. She's like, we can't give out that information. And he's like. <laughs> It, like, Javier Bardem never breaks, he's like, 
What does he wear? <laughs> <laughs> he, he finally hears somebody in the back flush a big old fucking stinker, and he's like, oh. I like how he, I, he looked. He's like, I can't do anything to you, you fat fucking turtle neck bitch. But he looks like, looks back there, and like when he does one of those like stare moves, like when you're trying to like be convincing your boss, like I mean, I'm serious. And he was doing this, and she's like. <laughs> You get this with movies all the fucking time. It's like, okay, I don't want the generic ending. I don't want to know what's going to happen. But then someone gives you something different. And you're like, fuck this piece of shit. Yeah. Where's my goddamn Supreme Burrito? Where's my steak? Uh, but in, in this case, I just felt like, to me, the ending was disappointing for some of the characters. Uh, but that's the way they ended it, and I respect it. But it just falls this tiny little dick short of a, of a 10 for me. It's a 9.5, one of the greatest movies ever of all time for me. I just, I cannot, I get pissed every time I watch it. I can, I, can say, I can see why the end would give it a 9.5, but I'm still going to give it a 10. I love the fuck out of the movie. I love everybody in the movie. I can watch it over and over again and still have fun every time I watch it. Javier Bourdain, again, is one of the best villains I've ever seen, period, in cinema. And forgive us if we've been saying his name wrong the whole fucking I I don't know how to say I have it. a bad feeling we I, have. I didn't say Javier. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Javier Javier damn fucking bitch. Uh, Javier we moved or damn. Temple. I, I'll deal with this guy, Sugar. You made it into Sugar. Uh, but whatever. Um, you made it into it. Um, I didn't <laughs> I couldn't call it for you. Uh, but anyway, look, he's one of the best villains in cinema I've ever seen, period. I mean, it's not just in this movie. It's just overall, like, intimidating, scary, quiet, but methodical and psychotic at the same time and not really knowing what's going to happen from one second to the next when he's talking to anybody, just like I felt like um, in uh, Gangs of New York. Uh, the dude, um, Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis yeah. is the butcher. You had no idea. Like the motherfucker was crazy as shit. Like he was the best. I think the Joker wise, Javier Bourdain in in, in his telling could play like Black Mask or something I've like that. I've always wanted Daniel Day Lewis to play the Joker. Yeah, he would have been amazing. But and he, he would have looked like the uh, the classic the comic classic, Joker yeah. with the long face. But again, and, and, and Josh Brolin and Tommy Lee Jones, it's a very like I said, a very simplistic plot. It's not really hard to follow. It's really easy for you to get into. Fuck but, is it easy to watch? But it's one of the best, like, just representations of, like, like Mike said, fate and just overall trying to escape your fate, change things, but sometimes just shit fucks you in the ass and you can't help it. And that's the way the life works. But still, man, as a cowboy movie, like, I've only got a few cowboy movies that I really fucking love. I know Mike and mine's favorite is Brokeback Mountain, but oh, man. <laughs> I love that. God, I damn. can't you can beans, uh, but you know, this, but naked can me, beans. This, this goes up there with Unforgiven, The Outlaw, Josie Wells, uh, Tombstone, and then this for fucking sure, man. Like, one, I love it. It's it's a ten for me. Yeah, yeah. Got Grant, fucking thank you, man, for everything that you do and that you've done for Grant us. Steel. 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 Bringing you steel oh, welding construction oh, since 1905. Steel. If you want steel, go oh, to Grant Steel and steel. Steel. We want to form one! <laughs> Comment down below with your all thoughts, no country roll, man. We love your fucking faces. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button. Get some goddamn wham up in you. Go on, get it. Get it, now. Get it up in you. Get right into it. Call it. I can't call it for you. We watched a movie. Yeah. We watched a movie. We watched it. We watched a movie. Uh -huh. mm. We watched a movie.